yeah, before going into a deep dive on uh, the various uh, specific techniques of uh, scientific machine learning, um, I want to maybe spend about 10, 15 minutes giving a, a 20,000 feet view, if you will, of uh, scientific machine learning, and then um, lay out the landscape of, of uh, what the opportunities, what the problem definitions are. We um, frame the taxonomy of, of what the rest of the, uh, the, the tutorial is going to be. Uh, and then uh, also uh, identify uh, specific challenges that, that Vinay and others will, will, will talk later on. Uh, and so um, this will provide a good context to the rest of the, of the tutorial. So building upon what Shanti uh, had talked about earlier on in terms of this Venn diagram of, of where uh, SciML essentially uh, resides here, right? So um, this, this picture here, um, right in the middle of the, of, of the slide, uh, it's, a, it's a very elegant picture, first um, shown, I think, by George Kanadakis in one of uh, talks a couple of years ago, that lays out uh, the spectrum of methods uh, where machine learning can be used. Right? So um, on the far right is when you have tons of data, and so you don't need, so the expectation is that you, uh, the any machine learning model has enough data to learn the inherent underlying patterns available in the data. So in that case, you don't need to know anything about the dynamics of the system. You don't need to know anything about the physics of the system. The hope is that in the limit of asymptotic amount of information that you have in terms of data, uh, you the, the machine learning model uh, can learn uh, the manifold on which this data essentially lies on. Uh, for a lot of uh, scientific computing problems, this is um, not, a, not a very um, um, easy location to be, right? So simulations can be expensive. So creating this input output data pairs can become expensive. So we might only have maybe a finite number of, of, of uh, input output data pairs. And so uh, this, the, the limit of, of large amount of data is not a feasible location for us to, uh, to be training machine learning models on. The, the, the spectrum that we are very comfortable with uh, is on the far left side of this picture, where uh, you potentially can have no data, but you know everything about the system in terms of its partial differential equations. And then you, you uh, take out all our numerical tricks, right? So our uh, numerical solvers, finite element, finite difference, finite volume, whatnot. And then we, we discretize the system and solve the system and get the information that we want. So um, people have started looking at machine learning, basically scientific machine learning uh, looks at this complete spectrum of, of, of methods. And so people have designed a variety of methods that work on the far right, basically no uh, notion of uh, physics, a lot of data and train machine learning models for that. Uh, and then uh, more recently, people have been thinking about what happens if I have some amount of data, but I also have some amount of domain knowledge. So how do I integrate uh, domain knowledge, perhaps in terms of uh, constraints, right? So if you have constraints and these constraints could be uh, either some measurement, and then I have some knowledge about, about the data, um, say incompressibility constraints if you're doing fluid mechanics, uh, some kind of uh, rules of thumb if you're doing um, something else, um, say equation of state if you're, if, you're, if you're looking at some thermodynamics and which, which the, the measurement data or the data that, that you're predicting are to satisfy. So that's the, 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 the region right here in the, in the middle. Or more in, in the past one or two years, there's been explosion of work where uh, people are considering twin machine learning models um, that essentially replace our, our normal uh, solvers, right? So you have essentially a neural network that comes in and essentially solves our partial differential equation. So this is an, a very exciting area uh, of, of research because uh, this allows us uh, to infer, to get inference. Once a machine learning model is trained, you can amortize the cost, right? It can, it can take days or weeks to train, but once it's trained, inference can be blindingly fast. Right? And so this could be very useful for real-time control. This could be very useful for fast design exploration. And it could also be very useful for inverse problems. Right? So this is the landscape, if you will, of uh, scientific machine learning. So um, this, this spans the spectrum of, you can use scientific machine learning uh, when you have some amount of data and some knowledge of the constraints. And you can actually reduce the amount of data 
that you need and increase the amount of constraint that you have until you go all the way to the, the far left. And that is the, the notion of neural PD solvers where you train a, a neural network given only the fact that you know um, all the dynamics of the system in terms of its equations. So if you want to do a, a, a deeper dive into, into, into what this landscape looks like, right? So the picture on the, on the top left is, is a, a canonical representation of a neural network. Um, in this case, it's the dense neural, net, dense neural network. So you have this input layer uh, at, the, at the far far left that feeds into a set of hidden uh, uh, hidden layers, and then you make a prediction on them. So in the case of conventional case, you need to have a lot of um, input output data pairs like here in, in the bottom. Say for instance, I want to solve um, um, a heat equation, an elliptic equation, and uh, I have a set of input, a field of input diffusivities, and I want to come up with what the solution is. Uh, because as, as a function of this uh, input diffusivities. So I know some uh, underlying things. In this case, I know the equations themselves. So I know that it's an elliptic equation. In other cases, if I'm solving, for instance, the Navier-Stokes equation, um, and perhaps I, I want to enforce, ensure that I have uh, incompressibility. Other cases, I, I, I know that there is some uh, constraint, equality or inequality that is being satisfied, or that the data has to rely on some manifold. So the, the key idea in scientific machine learning is how can I integrate essentially this domain knowledge? This domain knowledge can be, as I alluded to, in a variety of different uh, flavors, right? It can be constraints, it can be invariances, it can be the equations themselves, it can be inequalities. So the, the, it can be um, invariances like rotation invariance, translation invariance, um, and so on, symmetries. And so the question becomes, how can we actually integrate this domain knowledge into the, the neural network? And so uh, there are a few approaches of doing this. Oops. So again, this is a, this is a very active uh, area of research and uh, uh, this landscape is, is evolving very rapidly. People are, we are getting, and the community as a whole is getting more and more insight and understanding of these, but very broadly, at least currently, I think uh, that there are, four or five uh, ways in which we can account for domain knowledge into the neural network. The first uh, is uh, something very, very um, natural, right? So very, uh, uh, is, is I want to, if I have some constraints, if I have some invariances, if I know the equations, I can essentially um, incorporate them into the loss function. Right? So uh, neural networks, deep learning essentially is uh, training in, opt is optimizing the weights of a network. Um, uh, given some uh, uh, to, to, to minimize a certain loss function. And so uh, simply we augment the loss function. If, it's, uh, if it there's data and if there's knowledge, we augment the, the data loss function with some uh, loss functions that are associated with the constraints that we have. And if you don't have any data, then this becomes purely a physics guided uh, loss functions. And so this has be, been shown to be enormously successful uh, in, in solving a diverse variety of, of, of PDEs, as we will see uh, later in this, in this tutorial. The other uh, broad idea is, um, can you design um, architectures? Right? So um, can you design architectures that account for, inherently account for um, uh, these constraints, right? So this, you have capsule networks, uh, you have ODE nets, um, and then you, you have different other uh, architectures that ensure say rotation invariance, that ensure translation invariance, that ensure symmetries. And then you can also have different kinds of activation functions that essentially act as uh, different kinds of basis functions, right? So that represent essentially different functional spaces over which your solution can exist. The third kind of um, um, way in which you can, uh, you can embed domain knowledge into your network is through this physics guided initialization. So this is again, a very active area of research where um, you, so some of the methods are you either have prior data and you pre-train your network uh, so that it is within the, uh, the physics aware basin of attraction over which you're, you're, you're trying to make predictions. And this also uh, segues very nicely into, into recent work um, that show that curriculum learning, right? So if our, from the scientific uh, computing standpoint, the, the, the method of continuation uh, is a, uh, equivalent to, to, uh, to the curriculum learning uh, is, a, is a good way to incorporate um, domain knowledge into, 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 into the networks. Right, so um, the, 
a lot of these things that I'm, I'm alluding to will be um, uh, discussed in de detail by, by Aditya, uh, Bella, and, and Shanti and uh, Sergio later on in this, in this tutorial. So now going uh, deeper into, uh, into, the, into this taxonomy, to the landscape of what, what we mean by scientific machine learning and diving uh, and narrowing down what, what is the, the foci of, of perhaps this tutorial, uh, we, we'll talk about um, architectures and loss functions, right? So, uh, and these have been these two uh, variations of our different architectures, neural network architectures and variations on using different kinds of loss functions have shown to um, be, this diversity has been shown to uh, produce very good solvers, uh, uh, both forward solvers as well as inverse, inverse solvers for a diverse variety of, uh, of scientific uh, computing problems, right? So, uh, we classify, um, so this is again um, a, a current classification, if you will, um, architectures into pointwise architectures and field based architectures. Essentially, if you have a neural network um, that is making point predictions, that is, uh, if, you, if I have a partial differential equation um, that I want to solve and I want to train a neural network to solve this partial differential equation, if I'm training it to give uh, collocation points, uh, basically, if I provide x comma y, and it, it gives me an output of, of, of my temperature or my, my quantity of interest, that's a point prediction. And so uh, in, in the past three or four years, there's been an explosion of work on these so-called physics-informed neural networks and their uh, variants. They have been super successful in solving a wide variety of, 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 of uh, partial differential equations. Uh, people are also understanding uh, a lot more about the analysis behind it. What is their convergence rates? How do they generalize? How do they approximate? And coming up with uh, very elegant uh, mathematical theory, similar to the, to the PD analysis that uh, we have uh, uh, several decades worth of, of, of history and elegance on. The other kind of uh, techniques that we will also be talking about today is not the pointwise uh, architectures that essentially make predictions, like I said, given an x comma y, make a prediction on, 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 a, on a field variable, but rather in take, taking a complete field, right? So essentially taking a, a complete coefficient field or an initial condition field or a boundary condition field and make predictions on, on the complete field. So this field to field based architectures in the last, again, this has been, um, uh, there's been a wide variety of, of activity uh, in pursuing this. Uh, primarily because there's a direct link between field-based uh, uh, neural networks and uh, PD analysis. Because you can um, abstract out that the field is, is somehow related with um, our, our usual basis functions, our usual stencils in, uh, in finite difference, uh, and so on. And we can um, utilize, transfer a lot of the ideas from, from those concepts to, uh, to, the, to, to, uh, to designing architectures and designing loss functions for uh, field-based architectures. And finally, um, where are scientific machine learning uh, approaches um, very useful and where have they been successfully deployed? Again, we classify this into two parts. And again, these, these, these are the two kinds of problems that we will be also talking about in, in, in the tutorial. So uh, in the rest of the tutorial, the first set of problems is essentially coming up with forward solvers. Right? So I have um, essentially in the context of partial differential equations, I have initial conditions, I have boundary conditions, I have uh, coefficient fields. And then given these, I want, uh, I want a, a solution field that satisfies my partial differential equation. So that's what you see here. So there's been uh, tremendous uh, um, advances in designing and training neural PD solvers that essentially take an initial condition, a boundary condition or a field and make predictions on, 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 the, on the outcome output variable. The, the key point is, this is very attractive, uh, like I alluded to before, in that you can amortize the cost of training. A, a training can take a, a, a lot of time. You can, then that's where for large complex systems like, um, like this, this 3D, this is a 128 by 128 by 128 input uh, that produces a 128 cube output. This is a large network, so it, it requires some amount of computational effort to train. And so we'll make the case that HPC and cloud servers essentially allow us uh, an elegant democratized way of, of, of solving this at scale. But once you amortize the cost, right? So inference is blindingly fast. So this is where uh, this parametric neural PD solvers, right? So you don't train a neural, uh, neural network to solve a particular instance of a, of a PD. 
but you try to train it to solve a whole family of PDs. That is, the family of PDs could be um, a large set of initial conditions, a large set of boundary conditions, a large set of Cauchian fields. And so this essentially in, in, is a one sh in one shot, um, you, you train it for days or weeks, and then you have a well-trained model that within the space of this uh, set of initial conditions or boundary conditions and, and coefficients can make very fast and accurate predictions of your uh, field of interest. Now, once you have this, right, so, uh, so perhaps you have some measurement data and then uh, uh, you, can, you can then use, uh, again, SciML for inverse problems and design. Right? So if you have data or if you have some constraints or if you have uh, some cost function that, that you want to uh, maximize or minimize in terms of design variables, you can then use uh, neural PD solvers within uh, an optimization framework or you can define a neural network that actually produces an optimal. This is again, uh, ideas on generative models uh, that uh, have inherent constraints. So you have a design uh, requirement that you specify that's that's shown in the, in the bottom left. And the, and the train generator essentially spits out uh, a field or a, a quantity of interest. And you make sure that this quantity of interest satisfies your underlying physics by this, uh, this calibrator invariance. So this is also something that, uh, that we will talk about. So uh, I'm, I'm very excited about, uh, about the rest of the tutorial here, uh, where um, uh, the other folks in, on the team are going to uh, walk you through essentially the details of, of, of these various uh, scientific machine learning uh, specifics, particularly focusing on uh, one set of the point-wise predictions that I talked about here, the physics involved neural networks, as well as the field-based architectures uh, to make field predictions, and then going into uh, the forward uh, solvers as well as the uh, inverse problem solvers. And then the, the final idea is that at the end of the day, uh, from a, um, from an engineering perspective, from an end user perspective, we want to be able to solve uh, not just simple problems, we want to solve problems at scale, right? So large problems that uh, uh, are um, use inspired and use defined. And so to be able to do this, uh, we, we, we make the case that um, having HPC, uh, um, access to HPC and having democratized tools that can solve these, uh, uh, that can train these neural networks on HPC or uh, cloud-based resources, is, is an important part uh, of, of machine learning. 